Morning. Um, yeah, so we've been, um, Emma and I have been leading Kids Zone in the mornings, uh, and it's been an amazing experience. as our second year doing it. Um, uh, we've been coming to New Wine for a good long time. Um, and one of the things I really enjoy when I'm working with the kids there is, is actually not taking myself too seriously. So um, it was really interesting last night uh, in here. Um, I was sitting around here somewhere, and um, every time I lifted my drink bottle and I was having a drink, I was aware of people behind me thinking, that big bloke over there has got bright pink nails. Um, and so then I tried to lift the bottle with my fingers kind of curled under, and believe me, it doesn't work. So I then tried the other hand, but of course they're all glittery, and so that wasn't working either. So then this morning when I was um, introducing the program with the children, um, I... Um, I told them that I was going to be leaving for a short time to come and talk to you guys, and um, they were quite disappointed that I didn't look better for the, for the occasion, so I was immediately sat down and they did this. Um, and they also then, one of the kids um, said, oh, actually, we need to do your toes as well. But then they took one look at my feet and they all just backed off and they weren't going to touch them. So <laughs> it was very, very funny this morning, so we've had a lot of laughs. Um, but what I wanted to say alongside that was um, thank you to all the families that have entrusted uh, your children to us, and it's not something we take lightly at all. We have lots of laughs, but we don't take it lightly at all. We, we, we put a lot of time and energy, emotional energy, into working with your kids, and we get so much back from them. So I wanted to just start by thanking you for um, trusting us with your precious children. So thank you for that. Um, but that's not why I'm here today. Um, Lydia emailed me um, oh, a month or so ago um, asking if I would talk about what I do um, as a day job. Um, and so I'm really privileged that actually I work with kids in my, my day job as well. I've been a primary school teacher for about 25 years. Um, and um, I'm currently deputy principal in a big area school, just um, Tauraroa area school. You may have seen our marquee out down at, uh, we've got, got a gazebo thing with it written on the top, um, and it's about 25 kilometres southwest of Whangarei. Um, and we are growing exponentially. We've kind of hit on a bit of a formula that's just working incredibly well. Um, and we exceed um, NCA results for, um, for a lot of the top Auckland secondary schools. So if you're not, if you're not aware, an area school has five-year-olds right up to 18-year-olds in the same environment, and it's, it's amazing. I, I, I'm a primary specialist, and I run the uh, new entrance up to year eight program, um, and I don't have a classroom these days. I'm more of an administrator, but I still have a very hands-on approach. Um, and But I get to work with kids of all ages. I work with the prefects very closely, and I, I, I get a sense that we really do have amazing young people in New Zealand. And what I want to share with you today is kind of, it's almost like a state of the nation speech for education. So I, I'm, I'm going to go pretty quickly through this. It's widely accepted around the world that the New Zealand curriculum is, is pretty much one of the best. We have the freedom as, as educators to... Um, teach to our strengths, but teach to the needs of the children. They're pretty broad. And we have something alongside those called the key competencies, and it, it focuses on these areas. Thinking skills, relating to others, using language, symbols, and text, and managing self. And you can fit so much of what we need on, and participating and contributing. And we can fit so much of life skill within that. Alongside that, at primary, we've over the last few years, we've introduced something called national standards, which I'm sure you've heard about in the press if you haven't got children of primary age. And I'm not a great um, believer in them, I've got to say. Um, I don't like the fact that six-year-olds are being told they're failing. And I don't see a whole lot of benefit from national standards. I haven't, in the schools I've worked in, I have not seen any child gain anything from it. It's merely a label. Um, and I spend more time reassuring families that actually your kid's great. And your kid is musical, your kid is artistic, your kid is dramatic. We've got all these other skills that make um, well-rounded adults. So if, if there's anybody in the room that um, I'm really, you'll better find me. But if you want to talk some more about national standards and ask me some questions, I, I know quite a lot about it. I'm really, really keen to talk because I've, I've got some pretty, um, pretty definite uh, ideas about it. 
the teachers I've worked with through my entire career, and I worked for about 12 years in the UK as well, are just passionate. They're just so into the kids. They work so hard. Um, their programs are diverse. They put so much of their own energy and money into the classrooms. It's never funded well enough. Teachers are really altruistic in the way they work. And what's concerned me over the years in New Zealand is that we have something that is really special here, but we seem to have politically driven decisions coming from central government that have an agenda away from education. Thank you. And it's something I feel really passionate about because um, when you analyse the reason, I sort of make a little calculation. Does this benefit the children? No. Does it benefit the school, the families, the community? No. Does it benefit me? No. So why are we doing it? And there's so much of that happening now, and I'm not going to go into specifics, I haven't got time. I've only got a minute left. Um, I've seen Bible in schools diminishing, and kids who don't know what Easter and Christmas is. Um, I see less men in primary teaching, which is one of the reasons I've stuck with it all this time. I really feel strongly about being a positive male role model for the children. And, and alongside that, you know, um, we get kids who come to school, and we're a, we're a great school. I'm really blessed to work in the school I'm in, but we get kids who come and they haven't had breakfast, they haven't clothed, you know, we're, we're doing all of that sort of social stuff as well before we can even teach them. I also, as I said, I work closely with the teens um, and, you know, the influences of drugs, alcohol, um, smoking and pornography is just rife amongst our teens. You know, they're just being affected by it terribly and we need to create um, cyber citizens for the future. Now, I'm going to skip what I was going to say because I'm running desperately out of time. I just wanted to finish um, by saying, look, where is God in all this? And I think it's a real prayer item for us. We need to really protect what we have in New Zealand in our education system. Um, we need, it, it, it is our future. Um, you know, there are Christian schools, there are secular schools. I'm lucky to work in a senior management team where three of us attend the same church out of the four of us. So it's amazing. Um, and so I feel that we need to pray for our young people. We pray for our policy makers that they're actually showing some wisdom. And we pray for our, edu our teachers and... Uh, and that's, I've got to finish, I'm running over time, so thank you.